Estamos emocionadas y seguras de que tenemos un gran compromiso. La comunidad está muy feliz. Se siente dignificada y representada. Nunca imaginamos que los tejidos que elaboramos para mantener la memoria histórica de nuestro pueblo se iba a convertir en una forma de sanar las heridas de la guerra y menos que íbamos a ser reconocidas como agentes de paz. Juana Alicia Ruiz Hernández, from Mampuján, Colombia, on receiving the 2015 Colombia National Peace Prize. Even though Colombia is the oldest democracy in Latin America, the country has been embroiled in a conflict for over half a century. Since its independence in 1810, Colombia has lacked national cohesion. The country's three Andean mountain ranges act as a natural barrier to integration. As a result of that and the societal divisions by class interests, Colombia has historically suffered from a weak state with large areas of territory in which the government is unable to exercise effective control. The Colombian conflict began in the mid-1960s as a low-intensity asymmetric war between the Colombian governments, paramilitary groups, crime syndicates, and the left-wing guerrillas such as the Revolutionary Armed Forces of Colombia, or the FARC, and the National Liberation Army, the ELN, and narco-traffickers. By the 1970s, about a dozen guerrilla groups existed. Because of the war, about 220,000 people are dead, and around 7 million have been displaced. For about the last five years, the president of Colombia, Juan Manuel Santos, has negotiated with the FARC. In November 2016, Congress approved a historic peace deal. However, 50.2% of the population rejected it through a referendum. The parties are working on a new peace deal, and earlier in 2017, the government began negotiations with the ELN. Despite the challenges, Colombians working for peace are an inspiration for the process of reconciliation and healing. A process of reconciliation requires the active participation, not just of the government and the guerrillas, but also a wider commitment and support from other sectors of society. The support of society and business groups and their commitment to the peace process is key to reimagine and rebuild the social fabric of Colombian society. Women's groups, including the 2015 recipient of the Colombian National Peace Prize, have been central to this process by participating in peace talks and reconciliation efforts. These groups have sent clear messages that peace is possible only when people join together as a community. Many women's organizations have developed an action agenda aimed at healing the victims of traumatic events through a peace pedagogy methodology. The focus of these actions is learning by dislearning, which aims to transform the longstanding culture of violence with a proactive integrated strategy of social justice and equal rights for all. The business sector has played an important role both as victim and benefactor of the violence. Because of their economic and political resources, the participation of these sectors is key to the success of the reconciliation process. In the face of the challenges and opportunities that the peace process brings to this sector, there have been efforts to rethink and implement programs to absorb the former guerrilla fighters, create educational programs, and provide resources to peace programs to improve human rights and the environment. The interdisciplinary symposium focused on the Colombian conflict and transition to peace 
with a series of panel presentations, weaving memory and reconciliation quilt exhibit, and a quilt workshop. The series of complementary activities explored the transition to peace process through multiple lenses of arts and the humanities to raise awareness and education in the Michigan State University community. Additionally, to increase collaboration and exchange between MSU and Columbian institutions. Columbian scholars and citizen representatives from key NGOs working for peace came to MSU to build upon and expand our diverse networks with higher education institutions, civil society, peace organizations, business, and industry. Ultimately, we opened a path for an MSU study abroad program with the University of Cartagena, focusing on undergraduate research and dissertation projects by graduate students working in related fields. The symposium's featured speaker was Juana Ruiz, leader of the women's collective Mujeres Tejiendo Sueños y Sabores de Paz, Women Weaving Dreams and Flavors of Peace, recipient of the 2015 Colombian Peace Prize. This group of women sew quilts and tapestries to address trauma they experienced related to the conflict and then begin the healing process. Juana brought quilts from a series about the peace process and from a series about slavery. Viewing and discussing the film, We Women Warriors kicked off the symposium events. Faculty, undergraduate, and graduate students gather to discuss the documentary that follows three indigenous women who use nonviolent resistance to defend the survival of their people caught in the crossfire of the Colombian conflict. Assistant Professor Galia Banitas continued with those themes the next day. She incorporated symposium speakers into her two Madison College seminar courses. Opening the morning panel was Ricardo Esquivia Ballestas, a human rights attorney and founder of the NGO Sembrando Paz, Juana Alicia Ruiz, leader of Mujeres Tejiendo Sueños y Sabores de Paz, and Rosa Jimenez from the University of Cartagena. The speakers focused on the importance of relationship building, community, and inclusivity. In talking with the Madison students, and then again later to a broader MSU and community audience, Ricardo described the distrust among the community, corporations, and state. Years of deception and alternative facts bred distrust. Elites took advantage of the people's distrust. The war became an excuse to violate human rights. All the different stakeholder groups strive for self-preservation, which they have done through creative means. However, he works now to channel that creativity to find ways of working together for peace. His group, Sembrando Paz, tries to open spaces for dialogue, for trust building, to reunite people who have been alienated. He stressed the importance of building relationships to effect change. In difficult times, he holds fast to his faith because with God, one is never alone. Ricardo closed by inviting attendees to get involved and describe different opportunities. For example, grant proposals to international organizations often need to be submitted in English. Cyberspace allows for more involvement because a student could translate an electronic document from her MSU dorm room for his group back in Colombia. About 20 people signed up to volunteer. Juana's presentation to the students and broader audience in her featured presentation included her faith perspective that serves as the foundation for her work. Juana lived in Mampuján, a small farming community of about 245 families. In 2000, her village received news that the FARC had orders to exterminate everyone in Mampuján. The priest reassured them that this would not happen. A radio order then came through changing the FARC orders. 
However, the next day, the paramilitary group, the AUC, accused Mampuhan of collaborating with the FARC guerrilla group. After assassinating 13 villagers, the AUC forced every community member out of his and her homes. Juana has witnessed the cycle of physical, social, and cultural violence. She and others grew tired. They found that by helping others heal, move past wounds and desire for vengeance, that they were also healed. Elvira Sanchez Blake, Associate Professor of Spanish, discussed Juana's work. Sanchez Blake connected with Juana and other women's groups in Colombia as part of a Fulbright project related to using artistic media to deal with trauma and thereby transform from victim to advocate. Juana and the other women formed a network where they sewed. The collective creation of tapestry was cathartic and allowed women to reclaim their voices and begin to heal. The sewing also was part of oral history and collection of memories as part of reconciling and moving forward to building peace. Including the voices of the victims in the peace process creates opportunities, contended Sanchez Blake, for a more effective agreement and sustainable peace. Symposium audience members were moved by Juana's and Ricardo's presentations. Many in the audience were from Colombia and are at MSU as students, many on Fulbright fellowships. They, as well as other student organizations, including La Comunidad, undergraduate and graduate Spanish clubs, law student groups and centers, students from social work and the MSU Counseling Center, helped publicize the event. One Colombian attendee remarked how important this discussion of issues is and how it does not happen in Colombia. Symposium speakers also included students and scholars who studied the effects of the conflict on different aspects of society. Galia Benitez and her students, Betsy Bohr and Quincy Kittle, presented on the business sector. They found that industries did not have much influence on the peace process, but while some industries, such as livestock and transportation, suffered due to the conflict, others benefited. Rosa Jimenez, director of the University of Cartagena's Observatory for Forced Displacement, has served as a voice for many displaced people throughout Colombia. As a public university, she and colleagues can be a part of government efforts to address problems related to the conflict. She asserted that many Colombians are direct victims of the conflict, but all Colombians are indirect victims. She explained, the effects of so many children not receiving formal education ripple into the economic, social, and cultural sectors for the role the children could have had as they grew up if it weren't for the conflict. Education is a key strategy for the peace process. Jimenez contended that if people can learn a culture of war and violence, they can learn a culture of peace. Constanza Lopez from the University of North Florida had a presentation that demonstrated Jimenez's point. Lopez shared the work of youth in Medellin and Bogota who rejected violence and promoted social change through art. For example, in Medellin's Comuna Trece, a group of youth formally rejected the cycle of violence and crime in favor of beautifying the community with paintings, murals, artistic graffiti, and planting gardens, while also supporting others to do the same. They transformed and reinvented their previously notorious crime and violence-ridden community. Looking to the future, Alejandro Ejero Olaizola from the University of Michigan moved to the macro level. The Colombian Congress will vote on the revised peace agreement instead of having a public referendum. He, along with Rosa Jimenez and Elvira Sanchez Blake, outlined challenges the country faces, including a disengaged majority of the population. All speakers stress the importance of participation from citizens from all backgrounds and sectors as critical for effective and sustainable peace and reconciliation.
As a gesture of support for the Colombian people, MSU Assistant Professor Joni Starr facilitated a quilting workshop. Participants designed quilt squares based on what they learned from the symposium events, their thoughts and hopes for reconciliation, cooperation, and ultimately, peace.